Hi, guys, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, once again, I got my very special guest, Fran Masucci. Masucci. And uh, we're going to be talking about her dad today, what kind of guy he was. As you all know, we have um, strong evidence that her father was in the trunk of the 1972 Lincoln Town Car that I put in the river 49 years ago. And we're not going to get into that right now, but um, we pretty much know what, and we are also going to be sharing with all of you guys, all the evidence in chronological order, how it happened. And then you guys will be able to be like the jury to find out whether or not the people we think are involved were guilty. We already know the there's two halves to this. The people that were involved in New Jersey and the people that were involved in Brooklyn, people that were involved in Brooklyn, you know, we just know there's a couple of holes in that story. And I'm willing to pay $5,000 for anyone that can fill those holes with truth. No lies, no embellishments, truth. Five grand. Okay, so we want, we want to know who did this. So without further ado, we're going to be talking about Fran and what type of father he was, what it was like being the daughter of such a powerful man. How powerful, you say? A man that was bringing in for the Genovese crime family $104 million a year. 1974 money. We're talking about half a billion dollars, maybe. Maybe even more. One of you guys will Google that. Um, very powerful guy. Only second to Michael Franchisi. And, and Michael Franchisi was in the 80s. And this happened in, of course, 1974 when he went missing. So, Fran, um, welcome to the show. Thank uh, you. I want to thank you again for being here. And the other thing, I mean, this woman has been searching for her dad for 49 years. And searching for answers. And... Um, now she's talking to a former FBI informant. And Fran, 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 what is that like? I mean, did anybody ever give you a hard time? Like, what the hell are you doing with this guy? I have a few uh, headbutts. <laughs> Don't and, trust him. What does he want? What is he after? You know, all that stuff. Yeah. And what about just because he's good looking, don't fall for it. Did any of those comments came up? Look, I still got no, no, Kevin, I'm sorry. I know that you're in love but with your child. Tell them still alive. Look, 70 years old, they can still, and it's really mine. Anyway, so I want to talk to you. I want to, there's so many things that I want to get from you. And then we've had a whole bunch of problems with this Zoom. So we're going to make this kind of fast. But don't worry, we're going to do another one and another one and another one. So don't worry about it. Just trying to get through this stupid time frame here. I want to talk. To, I want to talk about your father, the man. Your father, the mafia soldier. Was your father ever um, made? Was he a capo? Was he? Can you tell us a little bit about that before we get started? Well, actually, I didn't even know who he was or what he did. I just knew that he was a bookie. I didn't know how big this was. The FBI was in my house in the '90s, going over this case with me, and they told me that he brought in this type of money. And I said, oh, you got to be exaggerating. But then, you know, at that time, I was already a millionaire myself. And I realized that I wasn't living the life that I led when I was a child. So I said, you know what? Maybe there's some vitality to this. You know what I mean? Well, was it was it the number? Did we go over the number? I don't know. I did so many of these videos that failed. Was it about $104 million a year? It was. It really was. It was $2, $2 million, million a week. A week? A week. $2 million yeah. a week. That, it's been I mean, verified. And, and you know... It, it's surprising to me in one way, but in another way, it's really not when I look at it. I mean, all the things that we did that I can't do now. You know, I had a private shopper. Uh, my mother had, she used to give her $1,200 a week to go shop food shopping. We had three refrigerators in the house and uh, well, she would go. They eat good. Ooh, not so much the Irish. Irish well, listen, food. I got some bad news for you, my friend. My mother was Irish. Okay. Oh, well, Italian. <laughs> and that's uh, why you know how to go Italian, good wait, wait, Okay. <laughs> wait a second. Wait. Irish, let me tell you, you something. Know, I'm Irish. I'm pretty good looking too. Hey, you certainly are. Let me tell you something. When was the last time you heard someone say, 
hey, I got an idea. Let's go to a good Irish restaurant. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I mean, it's all Italian. I mean, they make the best food. They make the best food. They make the best shoes. They make the best uh, uh, suits. They make the best exotic cars. And they make the best looking women too, I think. But anyway, so let's talk about what your father, who he was. Let's talk about who he was and the types of big names that he worked for. Okay, so <clears throat> we all were together in Miami Beach in the 50s. And so we, there was Santo Traficante. There was James oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a Say that name again. Santo Traficante. Wasn't he involved with, the, with JFK's assassination in 1963? Yes. Yeah, they accused him of being definitely with them. Well, they more than accused him. They brought him into the into the uh, what was that called? The Warren Commission and and everything. In fact, here he is, right here. Is this him? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that's when he was young. This was nineteen fifty four. Yeah. One month and one day after my birthday. See that? Okay, just to. So um, my mother and father were, you know, friends with them. And my father flew my mother with him to uh, Santo Traficante's house in Santo Domingo. And um, my mother didn't understand his wife very well because they had that dialect problem. You know, my mother was very much like Lucy. OK, so she got very sunburned in their house at on their pool and uh, they told her to put tea on it. So she put hot tea bags on herself, thinking that that's what they meant. And she burned herself even worse because she's crazy. She's crazy, my mother. Funnier than you can imagine. But Santo Traficante, James Napoli, Robert Manna, uh, Marty Casella, Martin Casella. These are all the people that we hung the out chin. The chin. Oh, well, yeah, Vinny the Chin. But he was in he was in Brooklyn. We were in Florida at the time. We were the 50s mafia back then. Oh, I got you. Um, okay. So we ate at Sonny's restaurant, which was Joe. I mean, there was there was a whole bunch of stuff going on here at that time. They were flying back and forth to Cuba because they were going to have gambling in Cuba. So they used to fly back and forth. Gary Garifola is another name. He's my godfather. There's books about him. Well, there was another angle to this president assassination, which was which involves Fidel Castro. And this is right, right. after the Day of Pigs in 1962. Um so, do you think so let me tell you what happened when I was watching, um, when I was six, I was watching the um, TV with my father with the parade. My mother was in the kitchen watching it in the uh, kitchen on the black and white TV. We were on the color TV in the, in the living room. He had his arm around me. We're watching the parade. And all of a sudden, you know, the president slumps over and my mother goes, oh, my God, I think something happened to the president. And he gets very close to the TV and he goes, they got him. And he went right to the phone. So my mother was crying and she was in the middle of baking a cake and he was on the phone and I was confused. I was like, what's going on? Like, she's crying. He's on the phone. Who's he calling? Uh, you know, and he's, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what he was saying. And my mother was hysterical. So I was hugging my mom, trying to calm her down. And then uh, after that, you know, in an hour or so, he said, uh, could I have a piece of cake? She goes, I forgot to put the flour in the cake. It's bubbling. It's all butter and eggs. I forgot because I was crying. And so it's just confusing. So, so, so how close, I mean, were they really good friends? Your father and this guy? Yeah, yeah, they were really good friends. But you, 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 you know that he was investing. Well, you, I know that now, but I didn't know that then. So what do you... What do you Oh God! So, what do you think of this? Uh, this this is all news to me right now. I'm just like give you an idea of who this guy was. This guy was a serious, serious, serious guy in organized crime back in in the '60s, and and then uh, I guess it's gonna catch up to him in ten years from now. But holy you also God. have to realize that he was a uh, president of the local 1247 for a while which was a, a, a union. He was a union leader. And uh, two other people are missing from that particular uh, Teamster union. Uh, Murray died in 73. My father was gone in 74. 
There's also phone records from the FBI that have my phone, my father talking to Jimmy Hoffa on the phone. So, you know, that was uh, also connect. They're all connected. You know, they knew each other. My father used to gamble with Frank Sinatra. We stayed at his penthouse. You know, um, my uncle Gary, uh, who was my godfather, was accused of killing Frankie DePaula, who my father was backing the fights with them. Jimmy and him were backing fights. Um, and they had a big uh, to do there in the garden with this guy, Frank DePaula, that was fighting. So they backed all this stuff. Okay, so let's let's talk about what your father did. He was into sports betting, which meant boxing. And boxing was very corrupt back then. Still may be corrupt today. Who knows? But they would throw fights, right? Did you, I, did yes. you, did you have any of those stories? Yeah, I had one at the garden. Uh, you know, you can read Ooh. about it at Jersey Boy. Uh, that's a book written about my uncle, who was my godfather, uh, Gary Garofola. Mm -hmm. uh, they had uh, in the garden, they had him fighting. I don't know exactly who it was that he was fighting because I was young, but um, Gary had the rag doll. The rag doll was a um, inherited club that the boys passed to each other. So my father and Jimmy owned it first. Then they gave it to Jimmy's son. Then it was passed to my uncle Gary, and then they passed it to Danny Lamego. So it kind of went down the chain, right? So Gary had all the go-go girls that he decided to bring to the to uh, the garden to cheer to all them go-go girls back in the day. Oh yeah, you know uh, they were topless, I guess. And I don't know. Uh, he turned the club around into a different thing. So anyway, um, he had them cheering. Frankie DePaul on to win. And this was a big to do back then. So Frankie was murdered because he was dating somebody he shouldn't have been dating. And he was warned. My father warned him three times. And Gary got on the phone and he said, I can't stop him from dating this girl. And he said, I told you, motherfucker, how many times do I have to tell you this kid's going to be in trouble if he doesn't stop it? And Gary said, I have no control over it. And they killed him. They killed this kid. So, you know, that's the kind of, I listen to this stuff all the time. <laughs> like, to me, it was normal. The, the, the thing that's that's setting this interview, um, uh, setting this interview uh, from others, all these YouTube guys, they get on, they look up old newspaper clippings and stuff like this. This is firsthand. You're listening to somebody that's credible, that, that was a member of the family. And um, I, I just this JFK thing just blew me away. Holy crap. Holy crap. It's It should give you guys the idea. And we're going to get into a whole bunch of other, I'm looking at my time now. Had a whole bunch of problems with this Zoom. So um, uh, that just absolutely blew my mind. But we're going to be getting into all the gangsters that Fran would sit down, the guys that would put her on her lap, on their lap as a little girl. And we're going to hear it directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak. No, no soap intended. Um, so let's let's close this one up for now. So it gives you guys an idea. Holy shit, Salvatore Telewatsky? What's his name? Tell him what that guy? Yeah. See, nothing ever works for me. Electronics don't work for me. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna um uh, do you have anything else to say before we get have another issue? I want to get this video up Kevin, and then we're gonna try to do another one back to back. You're gonna tell I'm gonna wear the same clothes. I wanna thank you very much for putting up the money and for oh. doing Things that no one has done for me before in 49 years. Not law enforcement, not my friends, not his friends. No one has done what you are doing for me right now. Okay, so I, mean, I don't think I feel that I may have. And we, the way the evidence looks right now is that it was a father that was in the trunk of that car. But the way every, I mean, you can't ignore this evidence. You can't ignore it. And how do you think I feel? I never thought in my wildest dreams, every time I would go over to 59th Street Bridge and look over while I was going to Queens, oh, ooh, what I felt it. I was like, who was that guy? Hundreds, if not a thousand times, I crossed that bridge over the 49 years. Even to this day, I always think of who that was. And now I get to look at her face. 
this is the whole story is just mind blowing. So on that note, um, I'm gonna cut this video off while it's still running and I can upload it. So we're gonna see you guys on the next one. Would you like to say anything real quick, friend? Thank you so much, Kevin, and thank you for watching. Thank you, and don't forget. I can subscribe. Like and subscribe, right, exactly. Otherwise, she's going to get pissed off. <laughs> you know, like it's, if she tells you like it, push the button. There you go. We'll put her ass on you. All right, let's go. Bye.